everyone, my name is Dr. Jenny Liu. I'm a board certified dermatologist in Minneapolis and I'm really excited to share with you my nighttime routine. My practice consists of private practice and academics and I do a combination of complex medical, surgical and cosmetic dermatology. One of my other role is an assistant professor. I train and work with dermatology residents in addition to other medical students and residents that would come through our department. And so a major passion of mine is education. There's a lot of information on dermatology and skincare on Instagram or TikTok and it can be very confusing, overwhelming, and often incorrect. So that is definitely a passion of mine. I really want to be a source of accurate information and provide reliable and evidence-based information, whether that's on dermatologic conditions, treatment, skincare, or skincare ingredients. So my skin type has definitely changed throughout the years. I used to be more combination skin, but ever since having my daughter, you know, two and a half, three years ago, whether it's a stress or sleep deprivation, my skin has gotten a lot more um, dry and sensitive. And these days, in you know, the kind of the dead of winter here, that's an extra challenge. On top of that, we're wearing masks all the time. And so that leads to more breakdown of my skin barrier. Furthermore, I struggle with the occasional hormonal acne and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation from acne. So my overall goal with skincare, it changes, you know, depending on my skin status and the season. But currently, I'm really just working on hydrating my skin, making sure my skin is healthy first and foremost. And then I will use a few ingredients that will help with acne, hyperpigmentation, and photo aging. My philosophy with skincare is less is more. I find that most individuals use way too many products on their skin or are way too aggressive with their skin. And when you use too many, they're either canceling each other out or it can cause irritation and worsening of what you're trying to treat. So I recommend always you know, limiting to two to three active ingredients at a time. And I think it's totally okay to switch up your products depending on the season, your current skin you know, status and what you're trying to achieve. And I do that myself as well. It really allows me to try different types of products. But the only thing you wanna be careful is that when you are starting something new, uh, you wanna be patient and give it time. And also try to make sure to avoid using two products that have synergistic or the same mechanism of action as that can lead to further irritation. Any sort of uh, true changes in your skin, that happens at a DNA level and that will take time. So when you are starting off with a new product, you wanna give it at least two to three months before you say it's not effective. So now let's get into my nighttime routine. So on most days when I'm wearing makeup, I do like to double cleanse. And using a cleansing balm, I found to be the most effective way for me to remove all the makeup and sunscreen that I'm wearing. I don't wear a lot of face makeup. However, I do wear um, waterproof mascara and eyeliner. So a cleansing balm is a great and gentle way for me to do that. And secondly, the cleanser that I use on a regular basis doesn't do a great job at removing makeup. It's a more more like a treatment and so I'll show you guys in a bit what I mean. The cleansing balm that I have been using for the past many months and it's, it's been lasting me a long time is the one from Vanilla Co. They're original. Reminds me a little bit of coconut oil. It kind of looks like it. It doesn't really smell like it, but definitely has a texture similar to coconut oil consistency, like many cleansing balms. And I just scoop a little bit on my hand and just gently massage it all over my eye, my you know face, and spread that out evenly. And so that is what I'm gonna do next. I find that cleansing balm is a great and gentle way for me to remove all the waterproof mascara that I wear on a regular basis. I don't like makeup wipes because I actually don't find them to be effective, number one. And two, I really don't like the rubbing action. Remember, our eyelids are very, very delicate. And so any of that can cause irritation and also lead to more fine lines and wrinkles. So what I am doing with my hand is just gently, very gently, kind of going back and forth 
to break up all of that mascara and makeup. And then I'll, I'll kind of spread it elsewhere on my face to remove all the sunscreen. Even getting a little bit on my lip to remove my lip gloss. You gotta have to be patient. It does take some time, but eventually it does all dissolve. And then I just rinse off of, of water and then follow up with my second cleanser. Okay, now that I've washed off my cleansing balm, the next cleanser I use is an acne treatment. Benzer peroxide is one of the most effective acne medicines out there. It's great at treating those inflammatory acne. It helps to fight the bacteria. And benzer peroxide and a topical retinoid is our first line treatment for a mild to moderate acne. There's a few downsides to benzer peroxide. Number one, leave-on treatments in particular can be very, very irritating, cause dryness and burn the skin. Furthermore, benzer peroxide can deactivate a topical retinoid. The only topical retinoid that can be safely used with benzoyl peroxide is adapalene. And lastly, it can bleach fabric. So many people either can't tolerate or don't enjoy using benzoyl peroxide. And it's very unfortunate because benzoyl peroxide, like I said, is very, very effective. And so what I found and what studies have shown is that cleansers can be just as efficacious as spot on treatment, the leave out treatments, but they're far less irritating and less likely to deactivate your retinoids. And so I've used a a lot of benzoyl peroxide cleansers over the years and the one that I have been using for the past year and absolutely love is the CeraVe Acne Foaming Cleanser which contains 4% benzoyl peroxide. You can find like 2.5, 4, 5 and 10% all of the different concentrations have the same efficacy. However, the higher concentration can lead to more irritation. So I say go with like a 2.5 to 5%, whether it's a cleanser or a leave-on treatment. The only downside to this cleanser is that it doesn't do a great job of removing sunscreen and makeup. And I definitely, you definitely don't want to use benzoyl peroxide around your eye. It can be very irritating. However, this is by far the most high hydrating and least irritating. Actually, I don't have any reactions from this. So this is great. This contains, you know, hyaluronic acid and blend of ceramides. It doesn't actually foam like it says. It creates a little lather, but not, not like a, a great foam. And it has this creamy, creamy texture. If you use CeraVe's like uh, gentle cleanser, it kind of reminds me of that. And what I do is just wet my hands and massage it all over my face like such, avoiding my, of course, my eyelids. And that's it. Now, if you are gonna be using a benzoyl peroxide cleanser, you wanna let it sit for at least a few minutes to allow it to work. It doesn't really have time to do its job if you just like, you know, lather it on and wash off. So what I usually do, do on a regular basis is I will put this on my face, let it sit, and then brush my teeth. I have electric toothbrush, usually takes about like two to three minutes. So once I'm done brushing my teeth, that's usually a good time. And then I just rinse it off and then I'm done with my cleansing step. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. So after rinsing off the benzoyl peroxide, when my skin is still damp, I like to apply a hydrating serum. The one that I really love, I've been using this past year, morning and night, is Vichy's Mineral 89. This is a very simple formulation, contains 11 ingredients, contains hyaluronic acid and Vichy's uh, famous volcanic water. One pump actually gets you quite a ways and it has, it's like a thicker, clear gel-like serum. And literally, I just put this all over my face and neck. I mean, she's even done studies look uh, of using this serum after like a cosmetic procedure and it has expedited healing and it's even great for those with like rosacea and sensitive skin. So next I will use a topical retinoid. Now I, I switch up between different types of retinoids but right now because I'm dealing a lot with mask knee on top of that hormonal acne, the one that I've been using for the past six months is a dapoline 0.1% gel, which is over the counter. And the one that I'm using is from La Roche-Posay. Adapalene is great. This is by far the strongest prescription that you can get over the counter. It used to be a prescription called Differin. Adapalene is a wonderful topical retinoid. It's really gonna be the one that's gonna give you benefits for treating acne and also improving signs of aging. This is probably gonna be the most bang for your buck. It is mostly studied for acne, but there are studies that shows um, 
it does improve signs of aging, fine lines and skin texture. So what I do is I just kind of dot a little bit all over my face and spread it. Adapalene is also the mildest topical retinoid um, prescription wise. It's a lot better tolerated than prescription tretinoin. So this is a great option for those individuals who suffer from acne, but also maybe want to treat some superficial signs of aging. One of the downside is it can be very irritating still. And for me, I only use this four to five days out of the week. If you are looking for a retinoid for the purposes of photo aging and you don't struggle with acne, then I recommend going with a retinol. Retinols are a lot more gentle. It does take more time for you to see the effects, but they do work there. We have a lot of good studies supporting the efficacy of retinol for photo aging and they're a lot better tolerated. Now, retinol, can, it can be very hard to formulate and it degrades very fast upon exposure to air and light. And so here the formulation does matter and unfortunately that's not something that is obviously easily disclosed to the average consumer. My recommendation is to choose a brand that is respected and reputable because they're more likely to invest more in their product formulation and um, a conduct studies. To that, I recommend that are over the counter, that are relatively affordable and fairly effective is the resurfacing retinal serum from CeraVe. This also contains their ceramides and licorice root extract, which can help with hyperpigmentation to give some brightening effect. And this one, I will sometimes even use in place of my eye cream to kind of gently dot around my eyes. The other one that I really like is Vichy's Lift Active. This contains retinol addition to hyaluronic acid. So this is another one. These two I, I've tried and I really like myself. So after my retinol, then I will go ahead and put on an eye cream. So the one that I have been really enjoying the past six months is the one from Glow Recipe, their avocado retinol sleeping mask. You can use this as like a treatment a few times a week or you can use it nightly as an eye cream. And it's just very hydrating. It has encapsulated retinol, niacinamide, other blends of vitamins, and polyhydroxy acid, which is gonna act as a humectant. I really like it because it's very creamy and, and thick. Kind of reminds you of avocado. It does contain avocado extracts. So I just scoop a little bit out onto my hand and then gently apply it all over my eye. One of the most common questions I get is, do you need an eye cream? Absolutely not. Theoretically, anything you put on your face, you can put around your eyelid. You just have to be extra, extra careful, especially if you're, if you're using like a retinoid or some sort of hydroxy acid because your eyelid skin is so much more delicate. So in those situations you can, and I've done it before, you just wanna be very careful, maybe limit the amount of use and the frequency of use. The benefit of using the eye cream is that it tends to be safer and formulated for the sensitive skin area around the eye. And then when I am putting on the eye cream, I like to just use my ring finger and I'm patting that in. Our ring finger is the, the weakest finger of them all. So it's gonna leave, give you the least amount of pressure and force. So you're not tugging on your eyelid skin and creating more wrinkles when you're putting on creams. So after the eye cream, then I go in with my moisturizer. So as a busy mom, I really appreciate products that are multitasking, meaning I, I really look for moisturizers that can be used as a facial and body moisturizer. I do use just facial moisturizers, but um, right now in the winter in particular, I really like to use the Roche Posay's Leprechaun AP Balm. It is a thicker cream, so I use this mostly in the winter and I do switch to a lighter formulation a moisturizer in the summertime. But this is a non-competogenic, meaning it doesn't clog pores, it's fragrance free, great for those with dry skin skin or have eczema. It, it contains shea butter, glycerin, and niacinamide. So really soothing and hydrating ingredients. So I just take a pump of that and it's, it is a thicker formulation. So for those with oily skin, you probably will not enjoy it as much. And you can already see like that 
little bit of that shine because it's thick and it's got more occlusives, but this is just what I need during the winter here. So that is the, my moisturizer for the face. Now, the one thing that I have added to my routine since turning 30 is a neck cream. So you don't need neck creams. Just like eye creams, you don't need to have a special neck cream. Our neck is one of the areas that tend to show signs of aging the fastest. And like our eyelid area is a lot more sensitive. You can definitely put topical retinoids on your neck. Um, for me, I can't tolerate that. I tend to break out in eczema patches when I, I use a topical retinoid. So the one neck cream that I have been using that I find to be worthwhile in splurging is the Elastin Neck Restorative Neck Complex. This contains uh, antioxidants, vitamins, including niacinamide, and they're a blend of peptides, which has been shown in few clinical studies to improve some of the early signs of like creepy neck wrinkles. There are studies that have actually shown that this technology helps to kind of clean out the broken up collagen and elastin and to allow new collagen and elastin to, to form. So I just do a little pump and kind of massage in an upward motion. You can use this neck cream twice a day or once a day. And then last but not least is my lips. Don't ever forget your lips because they also need hydration and care. So I will just finish off with a petrolatum base product on my lips. And the one that I'm currently using is the one from CeraVe, their healing ointment. I also love the one from just Vaseline, 100% petrolatum, or the one from Aquaphor. And this one is great because it also contains ceramides and it's not as thick as Vaseline for those who don't enjoy just 100% petrolatum. But I will even use this on my face sometimes. It's not comedogenic. If I have like really dry or irritated patches or it's great to use after a chemical peel, I will even use this on my feet or on my hands for those extra dry days. So that's pretty much it's my regular nighttime routine. Few days a week, I will add in a chemical exfoliant. And I think that is a great product to use that can help improve signs of aging, hyperpigmentation, and just the dullness that we get. I do find that most individuals tend to over exfoliate. Exfoliation should not happen on a daily basis. Our skin will naturally exfoliate with just cleansing and good moisturizing. Our skin turns over every 20 eight days that's its job and so we can help to really encourage that by just being gentle and taking care of our skin with the basics of cleansing and moisturizing however that cellular turnover does decrease as we get older and if you are you know have hyperpigmentation you know that chemical exfoliation can can be really helpful if you overdo with exfoliation you can actually lead to more irritation and so I just like to chemically exfoliate once or twice a week and maybe do something stronger once or twice a month. So what I like to do is I usually will use my topical retinoids, you know, maybe four to five days out of the week and add in a chemical exfoliant once or twice a week and then just have one day where I don't use any active ingredients and just a good moisturizer. There are a couple ways you can use a chemical exfoliant. The one that's easiest for me is just apply like a leave-on treatment. And the one that I currently using is the one from Naturium 10% glycolic acid also contains a blend of fruit extracts. This is a great one. I think leave-on treatments are great. I really like to kind of use this as like in place of my retinoid at night. You just apply this like you would instead of the retinoid. You don't want to use this concurrently, like layer on top of your retinoid. That can be too much. Also, you want to be very careful whenever you're using an alpha hydroxy acid to not mix it with vitamin C. Yeah, it can be a little too irritating because you're using two acids at the same time. Alpha hydroxy acids and retinoids have been shown to be very effective and do complement each other when it comes to improving signs of aging. However, very few people, like I said, are able to tolerate using it together. There are few ingredients on the market that have been especially formulated to have the two. I would say if you want to use like two together, you may want to pick a product that's been specially formulated for that. Usually those products are a lot gentler on the skin than layering like your 
your alpha hydroxy acid with your retinoid. And then a few times a month, I like to do a little chemical peel. Now with COVID, I have really been limiting the amount of you know medical grade peels that I get. So I've been doing more mini peels at home, but the two that I really like that you can do at home, again, not more than twice a month is the one from Drug Elephant. This one contains 25% AHA and 2% salicylic acid. And this will again will help give you all the benefits of alpha hydroxy acid, but the 2% salicylic acid can help with acne control. And lastly, the one that I've been enjoying lately is the one from Neova and is the Serious Glypeel. This is a glycolic acid, also contains some retinoids and vitamin C. This is a peel that you apply and it dries and then you peel off. So it's a chemical exfoliant, but I think think it's great for those who really like physical exfoliants but is not as harsh you're not physically scrubbing but you know you're kind of peeling off the mask so it's kind of fun that way and my philosophy for exfoliation I love chemical over physical physical scrubs are way too harsh on your skin it can actually further exacerbate like acne chemical exfoliants are more gentle they give a lot of better improvements of your skin and benefits with your for your skin over time so chemical exfoliation is my recommendation so that's it guys I hope you guys found it helpful remember less is more when it comes to skincare my philosophy is that skincare doesn't have to be expensive or complicated to be effective all you need is the basics of skincare which is cleansing moisturizing and some protection and then build on top of that with few good active ingredients that's tailored towards what you need Keep it simple, less is more. Remember, skincare is not one size fits all. I get asked so many times on my social media, you know, this product I heard is really good. Can I use it? Should I use it? Skincare should be personalized. Just because it's popular or everyone else is using it doesn't mean that you need to or you will derive benefits from it. At the end of the day, if you are confused on what you should be using on your skin or how to better treat your skin concerns, please go see your board certified dermatologist to get accurate diagnosis and recommendation for what you need. If you enjoy learning more about skincare, skin science, and all things dermatology, you can check out more information on my social media accounts. I'm on Instagram at derm.talk and TikTok at Dr. Daniel Liu, where I'm constantly sharing information on skincare, skincare ingredients, and a lot of evidence-based information when it comes to dermatology. Thank you so much for having me and have a good night. Bye.